this question of historical dating, historical location, it, it shows up early on and it seems like this is the end of my faith. You know, we say 5,000 years, they say 2,500 years. And, and it's just like, okay. And then, and then you, you start to wonder, uh, when, when did it become so important to my faith? The exact year of the text composition? All throughout my childhood, this was never a topic of our conversation in any Bhagavatam class I attended or discussion, except when we were discussing specifically academic history, right? Otherwise, it was never a topic of discussion. It was never important. And when have I made it all important? This is not my question. This is someone else's question that I have decided and to, to make important for me that has been imposed upon me willingly in most cases. And I think this is the key thing about faith and reason is that we have to be willing to set the terms of the discourse first. This is the biggest mistake that people make when we go into insider outsider debates, academic, non-academic debates, is that uh, faith versus reason, faith versus scholarship, is that we, we don't set the terms of the debate. We don't, we don't it's, like, it's like, you know, taking someone else's exam. The, the, the questions have been set for you and, and someone else is marking the exam and you're asked to sit and take the exam. Why should we be in that position? If we want to be a dialogue partner between faith and reason, then we have to have input in what will be the questions that are set on the exam and who is going to be marking this exam, right? And then we can take the exam because we know that it is on terms that we are appreciating, that we are understanding. Otherwise it becomes a very, very difficult proposition, right? If we don't, we have to first interrogate the terms of the discourse. And that is something that we learn very early on when we go into this academic context is that the most important thing about the debate is not who answers, is not what the answers are, right? That's not the most important aspect of the debate. The most important aspect is what are the questions being asked? And if you have input on the questions, then the answers are not that difficult, frankly speaking. I mean, they're difficult. Yeah, this is a good example. Half the battle is won. <laughs> yeah, this is a good example. Uh, but I think I'll need a little more unpacking that uh, setting the terms of the debate. So are we the two, three different things over there? One is when we, when we want to have a debate, the, what are the common authorities that we accept? It's like, if I'm arguing based on scripture and you don't accept scripture, or if I'm arguing based on science and you don't really give credence to science then what, what is, that is one thing. What is it what is that we agree upon? But I think what you are saying with respect to set the terms of the debate is that uh, every study involves some driving questions. And, uh, and while doing that study, many other questions can also come up. But we need to focus on our driving questions. And for that, you know, one of the things which I talk about intelligence, you know, Krishna talks about uh, knowledge and intelligence in the 18th chapter in the three modes. So one aspect of intelligence I see it is that to understand what is central and to hold on to it and to understand what is peripheral and to let go of it. So when you say set the frames of the de uh, debate, are you talking about this point of central and peripheral? So, and, but how much control do we have? You know, because the syllabus is decided by when you more or less the books that we read are decided. So how, how, how do we control the terms of the dis debate? So b both of your, your questions are excellent Prabhu. Uh, on, the, on the first one, I but what I mean by the terms of the debate is what you said earlier about assumptions. There are certain assumptions that are presupposed behind any question that is asked. Hmm. And to uncover those assumptions and ask ourselves, are these the right assumptions, the starting points, the axiomatic truths, the perspective, the world perspective that 
I want to begin with? Or is this something that I have adopted without a proper consideration, right? And, and uh, so I, I, I'll give you one example. I, I used to uh, uh, take my uh, students to uh, visit uh, different places of worship uh, as part of their world religions class, okay? Now, when we went to the Hindu temple, a young man, this was not an ISKCON temple, uh, but uh, a, a very nice young man, also a college student, uh, gave my students a tour of the, uh, of the temple. And at the end, he asked for questions. And one of the students, they asked the question, um, so can you tell me your, your main beliefs that make you a Hindu? And the boy said, oh, good question. And then he thought, and then he struggled. And he said, well, um, we're uh, vegetarians. Uh, wait, that's not a belief, right? Um, so we do a puja every day at home. Uh, wait, that's not a belief. Um, so he eventually got a few things, but afterwards he came up to me and he said, Professor Gupta, um, what was the right answer to the question? Uh, you're, you're a professor, please help me for next time. And I said, you know, it's not a question of the right answer you have to question the question itself. Here's the issue. Protestant Christianity defines its faith based on beliefs. These, if you believe these four or five things, you are a Christian. We have never defined ourselves based on belief alone. Beliefs are important, but practice is just as important, even perhaps a little bit more. We see the character of the sadhu. That's how we know this is a sadhu. Then we investigate, oh, what is your exact theology, Vedanta, this, that. But first we must see the character of the person, right? Their lifestyle, their behavior. So I said, immediately you should, when the question arises, you should say, actually, besides the belief, I want to tell you what is important to me as a Hindu. What makes me a, a Hindu? And the practice, our lifestyle is just as important. So this is an example of what I mean, is that embedded in the question, was certain assumptions about religion. And it's the ability to uncover those assumptions and question them. That is what I mean by setting the frame, the terms of the discourse.